Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today, I'm going to give my quick thoughts on Saltburn. So Saltburn is the newest film from the mind of Emerald Fennel. She obviously had her debut film, Promising Young Woman, that came out a few years ago. And I think she really, you know, burst onto the scene with that one. That's a really good movie. I think that this one doesn't quite live up to it, but it's still really entertaining. And in this one, we see a young man named Oliver, who's played by Barry Cogan, who ends up befriending a very wealthy man while he meets him at Oxford, played by Jacob Bellorty. His name is Felix. And he invites him back to his family home, his family estate called Saltburn. And he kind of ends up unraveling into this debaucherous, erotic thriller by the end of the movie. I thought it was really interesting how it very slowly leads you up into what's happening. The beginning 30 or 40 minutes of the film seem very calm. They seem very warming and kind of a basic story. And then it slowly unravels into just kind of pure madness by the end. I think where this movie really excels is its setting and its overall set design. It's filmed in Drayton Manor and also in Oxford. And it really captures that kind of opulence of almost royalty in Britain and having this old money and this kind of old state and these old traditions and being thrown into that as an outsider and trying to adapt to that. So I think it works on those levels extremely well. It really accomplishes what it's trying to do with that setting. Obviously, the themes of excess and obsession really shine through in this one. You're seeing the most opulent, most ridiculous, like I said, debaucherous excess of people that just have so much money they don't know what to do with. They're constantly throwing parties, doing drugs, just running around naked, being doing whatever they want. There's no consequences. And you see Oliver's character becoming more and more obsessed with obtaining both Felix and kind of this lifestyle that it's something that he always wanted. And then there's a twist towards the end of the film that I do think is pretty interesting. I think it's well executed. It does feel that it feels pretty obvious to like too late to when they actually reveal the twist. I would say probably about an hour and a half in, you kind of get an idea of what's going to happen, but they don't really fully reveal it to the very end of the film. The film takes place in the early 2000s, around the 2006 time period. So they integrate some of that music and kind of the way the world was at that time. So I like that they added that into the story to kind of immerse you into it. I think everyone in the film gave solid performances. Some are a little more overblown than others, but I think that Barry Cogan really steals the show and he fully puts himself out there and he lays it all out there to bear, both literally and figuratively. So if you are, you know bashful around any kind of nudity or any kind of erotic scenes in movies this definitely is not the one for you especially almost the last scene in the film he really goes all in on that one jacob alordi also gives a solid performance as felix i just saw him earlier this year in priscilla and man he's having a really good year i really can see this guy and his acting chops i can't wait to see him take on more of a lead role more of a meaty role than what he's gotten i think he was good as elvis and i think he's good in this one but i'd like to see a little more from him the characters that i actually really enjoyed in the film was felix's cousin played by archie medekwe who was in Gran Turismo earlier this year that I really enjoyed. He plays a very different character than everyone else in the film. He's very spiteful and he's kind of the foil to our main character. And I do like their back and forth. I think their banter is some of the best in the film. And what's really interesting is the way that the director in the story uses the idea of kind of its erotic themes and sex in the movie because it's almost used as a weapon as our main character. It's used as a way to leverage against the other people in the film because they're so obsessed with kind of the lustful passions of life that he uses that against them. So I think it's interesting to use it that way. It's almost similar to how it was used in Promising Young Woman. It's interesting how she takes these themes and can kind of turn them on their head. My big knock on the film would actually be the way that they stick the landing. Like I said, I think it gives up the twist a little too early in the minds of the audience. It doesn't fully reveal it till the end, but you kind of know where it's going by the time you get there. So I would have liked that falling action to maybe get wrapped up a little bit quicker. We get this big climax and we get about another 30 minutes really wrapping things up to kind of the point where we thought they were going to be anyway. So I've liked that maybe be tightened up a little bit. So overall, if I were to rate Saltburn, I would give it an eight out of 10. I think it's one of the better films this year. Another great directorial pursuit from this director. I can't wait to see what she does next. It might not be for everybody. Like I said, it may be a little too over the top and it's not quite a biting satire that people might want it to be. Like I said, it's a very over the top movie, which might make some people uncomfortable. So if you check out Saltburn, let me know what you thought about in the comments below. Did you like it more? Did you like it Less. I always love to hear people's opinions. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and see you guys next time.